So I got some like stiff, I want some stiff stuff because your nice soft clay out of the bag doesn't, um, doesn't lend itself really well to uh, holding that pot steady because what you want to hold that pot in place. Tool set here. And uh, bar someone's trim tool. I think this one. Yeah, we'll give it back. Promise, promise. I just like to. I have a. I have like a fancier trim tool that I use in my home studio. I like to do the demo with this one just to prove that it's not the tool. It's not the tool that's it's doing it. You know. It's the person. It's which the is, yeah. Which is even sadder. <laughs> you know, it's just the skill, skills in the hand. You know. And so, the the most important part of this uh, trimming process is getting that pot centered. And it's also the thing that kind of eludes you the most right at the outset. So that's to say the hill is very steep at the beginning. And then as you start to understand like how to get that pot centered, how to keep it in place, it gets much easier to kind of reach a plateau pretty quickly where it's like a struggle. And then you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, Cause if it's out around every, the most outward portion of that pot is hitting your tool with more force. And so same thing like in all the directions. If I'm trimming down and it gets a little bit weird, how do I fix it? And so I have some tricks, I have some tools and tricks. This is a nice one that we can use, Surform Rasp. I'm told it's a surf form. It was used to make surfboards originally. Hmm. Okay, so I like to trim right on the wheel head. And remember uh, last week when we talked about trimming that rim off, making it nice and flat. This is when it comes into play because if this rim is irregular and I flip this over, now the bottom res is responding to that rim, um, you know, one to one. So that's why we want a nice regular rim. I can check the roundness of my piece by rotating it. I try to get it, you know, back into a, get it out of that oval. <laughs> kind of the benefit of the wheel is that you can create circles, but then as soon as you take it, things off the wheel, you're kind of losing that circle. So uh, do your best to try to retain it, you know, and drying your pot adequately before you kind of un take the wire under it and lift it off. You know, right in that moment, if you kind of rush that step, you're flopping the thing up and folding it kind of into an oval and it's hard to get back. So if you can get your fingers down inside of that pot, it, it benefits you to feel, kind of get a, get a sense of how much clay is down there because it's hidden from view, right? Unless you slice that pot open, you really are just have a little bit of an inclination of how much clay is down there, but you don't know really. So. If you can, before you center it, set, you know, get your fingers down to the base and feel and try to get a sense of what you've got there. All right, so how do I get this into the center? And so I like to trim right on the wheel head because I get, oh, immediately I get a visual indicator using these concentric rings. Um, sometimes your rim falls right on that ring and it makes it more difficult, but you can use the next one out. So I can see obviously right here, finger width over here, nothing over here. So I can already start by getting it pretty close just by you know, before even turning it. Mm -hmm. That's the hope. Well, looks like, oops, I just centered it. But I'm gonna give you another little trick. And that is to mark the furthest point from center. And so to do this, I'm gonna bring my needle in. Now the, the pot doesn't, if it's way, way, way off, it's gonna like jam into your needle and really like kick the pot over. So get as close as you can. And then to get that last little bit, I'm just gonna slowly bring my needle in until it scrapes against the pot, so there. And that little scrape indicates the furthest point from center, assuming that this is even. <laughs> if it's a little uneven, it's, it makes your life more challenging, which is again, why this hill's really steep at first at the outset, because like you gain skill at throwing, you kind of set yourself up for trimming right. success, you know? So <laughs> yeah. it, it compounds, your success kind of compounds as you, as you gain experience. Okay, so I'm gonna find the middle of that mark, and the shorter that mark is, the further I'm from center, and the longer that mark kind of becomes, the closer I'm getting to it. So go right from the middle of that mark and just give a little push. Now it is possible to go past, and then all of a sudden you're off center the others off the other side. So just move like incrementally, and then if I wanted to, I can make another mark. I just want to move up or down slightly, and I want to keep my mark within this range where I'm gonna be trimming anyway, because I'm gonna be trimming. <laughs> this foot removing some clay from here and so that mark hopefully gets trimmed away cleanly 
And so it's getting a lot closer now. So that mark gets a lot longer. You can see how long it is now. And so that just indicates that you need a little teeny tiny push, little tiny push, you know, and then you're battling it back and forth. And uh, let me just see if I can get the camera to see this. Okay, so if here's the cross section of my pot. What I want to remove is out here. So that I want the you know the wall of the pot to have a regular width as I, as it rises up the side. So I'm taking clay off of the corner right here. And then same thing on the other side, it'll all happen in the round as it rotates. I was a little too far out. And then I just want to remove a little bit of clay from the centermost portion here. And you know, if you were to look at your pots, you may have more clay to work with. So, um, you know, again, more skill you gain at throwing, the less clay you kind of leave down here. And at the outset, you just have more to work with. There'll be more like that bowl over there is like a fair bit. So I got to stick this thing down to the wheel head. To do that, I want to use some stiffer clay. So you can each have a handful of this. Um, not that stiff. I had, a bet, I had a better bag. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, some really firm stuff. But you just don't want it really soft. Like, if it's super soft clay, it's just not going to have, it's not going to grip your pot onto the wheel head. And so once you get it centered, you want to keep it there. You know, you struggle to get it there, and um, you want to keep it in place. And so I'm going to use three lumps of clay. And I want to kind of make like a nice chunky snake like that. And then kind of wrap it around the edge. And then when I push in here, I'm not so much jamming my thumb in towards the wall of the pot, as, so, as I am like down to the wheel head like that. And it kind of, see how high this goes up the side? That's mm -hmm. what you want. It's a little teeny snake down at the bottom is doing nothing, right? Like that's not gonna hold anything. Especially my shape just, it kind of terminates in. So it's gonna want to kick out of that. Yeah. And we'll kick out of that um, the grip of those pieces of clay. Which is why a little flare at your rim, you know, just helps you, you know, construction-wise. Okay, so three points, and that one's like I want it right up, way up the side. And then when I push down to the wheel head, it kind of locks the clay onto the wall of the pot. Like a little banana. Okay, the hope is you get to here and it's still centered. If you, if you get to here and as you put it down on the wheel head, it kind of kicked it off center, kind of just struck, you know, try to get it back to center. And maybe that's not even, you don't have to remove these pieces of clay, you might just gently push it within those pieces of clay. Now, it depends on if your piece is really soft, you know, you don't want to warp it. So your, your mileage may vary. Okay, so I'm gonna make myself a little plan. My plan is to trim everything outside of this first mark that I make. So something like that, and trim all of this clay out here. Down, down to here probably, ish, and then down the side. And then I'm gonna mark the inside of my foot ring, something like that, just to give myself a thicker, this is maybe thicker than I want in the end, but just so I know, like, if I don't go past that boundary, and I don't go past that boundary, I leave myself enough clay because we're removing clay now, and so as soon as you go a little too far, like you said, it's, uh, you know, bad news. You're going to run out of, you know, if you run out of material, there's no putting it back at this point. So this is the reductive portion of the process. And so before you kind of hit it with the trim tool, you want to maybe remove some surface irregularities. So you can see how this is, my fingers kind of dancing around like this. And the tool will tend to want to follow that. Very difficult to kind of like work against the bumpies and so you want to use the something like this they're for sale up in the front you know five six dollars even comes with like a little handle or something maybe it's eight or nine dollars but um this is essentially like a series of cutting edges and so it's much easier to kind of hold this much like i did with the needle waiting for the highest point to hit my needle i'm going to do the same thing here and just wait for the kind of the, the most outermost part of that chunky bits is going to hit my 
hit my surf, surf form. So you can see how it's just bouncing. I'm not following. And if I follow the whole path up and down, I'll just kind of accentuate what's happening. So what I want to do is just let the high point get shaved down. If I do this with enough patience and uh, steady enough hands, and eventually kind of bring it back, get all the surface irregularities off of there. And then it's from there, it's much nicer to use the trim tool. And so you can do the same, you can do that on the side. You can also do it on the bottom. If your bottom's a little bit irregular or something, you can just trim down until it's level and flat and then come in and kind of define the foot ring. So um, there's gonna be more clay out here at the outset. Um, so I like to start by kind of taking not a full width of the trim tool, but I'm gonna start, you know, probably like three quarter, uh, two thirds of the way across that trim tool down the side. And I'm gonna start cutting into that line. And as I do, I wanna rotate my tool. Because what that's gonna do, what it's gonna do is gonna create a foot ring that sits up like proud. Here's the pot, comes up like this, and the foot ring really differentiates. And to do that, you can't follow what you've already got. You have to change the orientation of the tool. And so rather than if I just cut straight in with steady pressure from the side, I'll just keep what I have. And instead I want to cut more with this bottom corner. And that looks like this. I'm kind of creating a groove right there. You see how my tool's almost rotating in space like that? Rather than cutting, cutting in real hard. And I just want to work up to that line slowly. And I can switch to, you know, cutting on the top if it gets a little wonky and funky. But just hold and keep cutting in until I get to that point. Okay, so I kind of rotated that under. So you can see now I've got, it's, it's kind of vertical right now, my foot ring. But I'm going to, once I've established that groove right here, I call it this inner part of that corner. I'm going to take the left point corner of my tool and start in that groove. So I've kind of defined the foot ring. Now I'm going to come down the side and trim and kind of fade off. My pressure is going to feather off mm -hmm. as I reach about here. And so that the thrown wall and the trimmed wall, the pot kind of, are, it's an illusion. You're trying to blend the two together. So left corner of my tool in that groove. And now I do want to follow the, sh the sh surface. So I come down the side and start to round, just like we did with the rib. You're rolling your tool, it's a flat edge of this tool, but I'm, as I round the corner, I'm kind of rotating my tool slowly. It looks like you're putting a lot of pressure, is that not true? I am using a fair bit of pressure, yeah. <clears throat> so really like, it's not so much pressure in, it's like tension pressure in my fingers, like holding this tool as steady as possible. If I'm holding this real loose, it's gonna be at the whim of this clay to kind of kick you around. And so elbows in, you like triangulate everything, even here. See my hands, just like when I'm throwing, the hands are joined. Um, and yeah, learning how much, you know, how much force to use. That's, that's what we're, that's where we are, right? So you notice my left hand's on top and a good indicator that your pot's too soft is if you can't have your finger here as it rotates. You know, if it's too, if it's like sticking to your finger, then it's a little too soft. You definitely don't want to be pushing down here and concaving that that floor that's just an indicator again that it's too soft and I know it's like I already got it centered I want to keep going um, you know but just notice that if you push through and trim when it's too soft it gives you a hard time it's almost like as you're trimming it's not giving you a regular cut the softness of that clay it'll, the tool will kind of gouge on one side and then all of a sudden you're stuck trying to deal with that irregularity um, so I'll come back and just I want to turn that foot ring out slightly so I'm going from there to like there so that it flares out. And that's gonna give me something, you know, if I wanted to dip the rim in the glaze on a bowl, especially like here, I could hold the whole pot. But <clears throat> if you have a bowl and it's got a wide rim and you wanna dip the rim in the glaze, you're gonna to have to have a little something there to grip onto. And you're like, what? I don't know anything about that. It's coming later, that's later. So I kind of bounce back and forth between these two, like do the vertical cut with my, this, the bottom corner in the groove, and then stop, <clears throat> excuse me, change, put the left corner in that groove and then trim down the side like this. And so you'll, you know, early on, you might have more clay here. So you'd be taking, hopefully cutting nice ribbons off. <laughs> 